On March 1st of 1845, the United States Congress made Texans an offer that they had been waiting for. The Congress doth consent that the territory pro properly included within and rightfully belonging to the Republic of Texas may be erected into a new state to be called the State of Texas. Be it resolved that the state to be formed out of the present Republic of Texas and shall be on equal footing with the existing states as soon as the terms and conditions of such admission shall be agreed upon by the governments of Texas in the United States. Texas had joined the United States at last. Sam Houston knew his successor who would maintain his policies. That man was Dr. Anison Jones. With Houston's help, Jones won the presidency in 1844. Anison Jones first came to Texas in 1833. He soon had built a thriving medical practice in Brazoria. He later fought in the, Te in the Texas Revolution. After the Revolution, he served in Congress. In 1838, Sam Houston appointed him minister to the United States. When Lamar took office, Jones lost his job as minister to the United States. He later served in the Senate and then the Secretary of State during Houston's second term in office. In this position, Jones tried to convince the United States to annex Texas. Anison Jones declared, The final act in this great drama is now performed. The Republic of Texas is no more, as he helped Texas join the United States. Jones continued Houston's policy on most of the major issues now facing the Republic. He maintained the peace policy toward the Texas Native Americans. Jones also tried to make peace with Mexico. He worked hard to convince Mexico to recognize Texas independence. While this pressing issue during Jones's presidency, however, was annexation. Since the earliest years of the Republic, many Texans wanted to become part of the United States. For some years, however, the United States showed some reluctance towards the idea. Texans had many good reasons to want to join the Union. One major concern was of the threat posed by Mexico. Some Texans worried that Mexico would retake Texas. Becoming part of the United States would limit the threat to Mexico. Texas was heavily in debt. Few Texans had enough money to pay their taxes, and the government had few other sources of income. The government even had trouble borrowing money. Joining the Union would enable Texans to use United States currency. Currency is the money used in a country. American currency is worth more than that of the Republic of Texas. Also, many Texans had been born in the United States and had relatives there. The family ties were just one more good reason to join the United States. Many Americans had concerns about making Texas an American state. At the time, there was a balance of free and slave states in the U.S. Congress. If Texas joined as a slave state, it would upset that balance. Opponents of slavery did not want to see the power of a slave state increase. The United States also faced economic problems in the early years of the Republic of Texas. The Depression called the Panic of 1837 set in. The last thing the United States needed was to admit a new state that was deeply in debt. In 1844, Texas and the United States worked out an annexation treaty. It say that Texas was to become territory of the United States. This was not what the people of Texas wanted. They wanted statehood. The treaty also required Texas to give up public lands. Public lands are property owned by a government rather than an individual. Many people in Texas did not want to give up this valuable land. However, the treaty also required the United States to pay the debts of the Republic of Texans. Most Texans wanted to become a part of the United States. As a result, they agreed to this treaty. The U.S. Senate, however, rejected the treaty by 35 to 16 vote. Some senators thought the treaty gave Texas too much. Others thought it gave Texas too little. Without the Senate, U.S. Senate's approval, the treaty would not take effect. It was just as well that the Senate vetoed the treaty. Jones had a plan to win a better deal for Texas. He involved Great Britain in ending the fight between Texas and Mexico. Great Britain tried to pressure Mexico into recognizing Texas as independent. The British thought that the Texans favored independence over annexation. Jones knew this would upset Americans who feared the British influence in North America. The British, on the other hand, did not want Texas to become part of the United States. Great Britain feared that the annexation of Texas would make the United States too powerful in North America. 
Britain was willing to help Texas and hoped that the Republic would remain independent. Jones' plan convinced U.S. President John Tyler to encourage Congress to take action. Congress passed a joint resolution for the annexation of Texas. A joint resolution is an act of both houses of Congress that have a power of law. President Tyler signed the resolution. President Tyler urged the Texans to sign it. The terms of this joint resolution were much more favorable to Texas than the Treaty of 1844. Here are the key points. Texas would join the United States as a state after its people approved the Constitution. Texas would keep its public lands. However, the money made from the sale of public land may be used to pay down the debts of the Republic of Texas. Texas could divide itself into as many as five states if it wished and Texas would be a slave state. Britain kept its efforts to stop annexation. It convinced Jones to delay any action on statehood for 90 days. Then Britain urged Mexico to recognize Texas' independence. Mexico agreed to acknowledge the Republic with one condition. Texas must reject annexation by the United States. President Jones called a session of the Texas Congress to vote on this treaty and the Mexican offer. The time had come to decide between statehood and an independence. Texas Congress voted and accepted the annexation, and it became the 28th state in the Union. If you look here at this map, you can see the amount of land that was annexed into the United States, all the way north to Colorado, down through New Mexico, and to Texas. All became part of the United States. The Republic of Texas grew quick, quickly. When it gained independence from Mexico in 1836, about 50,000 people lived in Texas. By the time Texas became a state nine years later, its population was about 125,000 people. This growth was due mostly to those who had migrated from Texas to Texas from the United States or other countries. Most people moved to Texas for one reason, an abundance of cheap land. The Constitution of 1836 gave about 4,000 acres of land to the head of each white family who lived in Texas. The Texas leaders also gave land to veterans. A veteran is a person who once served in the armed forces. Families of Texans killed in the Revolution also received land. However, the Republic of Texas offered no land to African Americans or Native Americans. At first, Texans did not have to live on the land that they received. The government changed this rule to encourage people to settle the territory. Texas leaders also wanted to discourage land speculation. They still used land to lure people to Texas, but they required people to stay on the property. By March of 1836, the law required new settlers to live on the land for three years. After three years, they obtained full ownership of the property. One of these first land agents to bring people to the Republic was William S. Peters. He agreed to move about 800 people onto land near the Red River. Most were Americans. Peters' colony helped settle North Texas, and this is current-day Carrollton. Another important land agent was Henry Castro. In 1842, he received a grant to build a colony on the frontier. His land was about 25 miles west of San Antonio. By 1845, he had moved more than 2,000 people onto Texas. Most of them were French and German. He also built four towns, and the most successful was Castroville, where some of the early buildings still stand. The Adelsverein, also called the Society of German Noblemen, brought more than 7,000 Germans to Texas in the 1840s. Some of these people settled in the city, such as Galveston, Houston, San Antonio. Others built their own towns, such as New Braunfels and Fredericksburg. Raising crops and livestock was the most common occupation in Texas. There were various kinds of farms in the Republic. The majority of them, though, were small family farms. 
Most Texans made their living by subsistence farming. Subsistence farming provides just enough income to support a farming family. The typical farm was about 140 acres in size, and farmers used most of this land to raise cattle and hogs, gather firewood, and hunt game. They used some of the land to grow corn, which provided food for people and animals. Many farmers also grew vegetables and fruits in small gardens and orchards. Some also planted a cash crop, usually cotton. A cash crop is one that is sold for profit. Texans sold cotton and other cash crops in order to buy items they needed from the United States. But life in the Republic was not all work. Those who could afford it sent their children to school. Many Texans saw education as the best way to improve themselves and the Republic. Religion also played an important role in Texans' lives. Texans had criticized Mexico for failing to establish pu public schools. Yet, the Republic of Texas did little to build schools. During Sam Houston's first term, other needs were more pressing. Lamar's educational program produced only one public school. It opened in Houston in 1839, and it closed one year later. Because the Republic failed to build public schools, and ordinary Texans often took the role of teacher. In rural areas, mothers taught the children at home. Some towns hired a teacher. Many of these teachers worked at other jobs and taught school on the side. Still, the need for children to help on the farm often prevented regular classes. Religious groups built the first places of higher learning in Texas. Ruddersville College opened in 1840. Others soon followed. In 1844, Wesleyan College began operating in San Augustine. Many of these early private colleges failed or merged with other schools. Baylor University opened in 1845, and it is the oldest continually operating university in Texas. Before Texas independence, Mexican law had required all Texans to be Roman Catholic. Most people had their own private beliefs and practices. The Republic of Texas had no established church. People were free to worship as they pleased. The fastest growing religions were the Protestants, including the Baptists and the Methodists. They wished to convert others to their faith. They used this method called revival, and it was a meeting to design or it was meeting designed to reawaken strong religious beliefs. Revivals were both religious and social events. The meetings were lively and gave people a chance to come together and talk. Most Texans lived far away from one another. Protestants and other religious groups also used different methods to bring people to their faith. Some published newspapers and built schools. Others sent traveling preachers to towns, farms, and ranches. Ruddersville College first opened in 1840. Analyze this map. How would the proposed U.S. annexation of Texas affect the balance between the free and the slave states? 